What's up, y'all? Appleback. Um, doing a, a fun video today, um, right before I had to go to work. Um, but my wife sent this uh, awesome question. Uh, I love all of her curiosity and questions, and this was a fun one to look up this morning. Um, so she asked, what is the furthest uh, we've gone in space in our solar system? And can I show pictures and explain how they did it? Um, I'll do my best. I'm not a rocket scientist, unfortunately. Um, but I've done a lot of, uh, I, space is my, probably one of my favorite subjects of all time. Um, it is just, uh, it's a fun subject and it combines a lot of my, um, and I apologize for all the glare off my glasses, but anyway, um, combines a lot of my favorite, um, subjects like physics and, um, just, yeah, um, uh, celestial bodies, astrology, all of that stuff. It's very, very interesting to me. So um, to kind of get to it, um, the furthest we've ever gone um, in terms of not people, uh, unmanned aircraft or aircraft, spacecraft, I should say, uh, was the NASA Voyager 1. Um, they sent this bad boy up into space all the way back in 1977. That is seven years before I was born, uh, so a long time ago. And so that was, what, 47 years ago now. And it has, um, it was originally sent to just fly by Jupiter and Saturn, which is our two biggest planets in the solar system, uh, to take pictures and send them back to us. And um, it just kept on going. Um, and they, uh, it's continued to send back data all the way up until 2012. I don't know that we've gotten any data since then. There's, I, I think it um, has gone far enough away that it's uh, probably difficult for it to still recharge its batteries and things like that, which oddly enough, it uses a nuclear um, nuclear battery uh, where it uses like a nuclear reaction inside of it to charge itself. Um, but I, I think it's outside of where it can still gather any interesting pictures and data and things like that. Um, and it's still technically in our solar system because it's still under the influence of the sun, um, which is interesting. So let me pull up some pictures. All right, so I believe this is Jupiter, I believe. Uh, Jupiter and, uh, oh, no, 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 this is Venus, I'm sorry. Um, this is Jupiter, and then this is Saturn with this big old ring. And these pictures were actually taken by the Voyager 1, um, which is pretty freaking cool, if I were to uh, say so myself. Uh, this was an animated one. Let me refresh it. There it goes. Um, but yeah, this is a little video that it took, which is incredible. I think uh, this was taken back in like the late 70s when it had finally gotten close enough to take this video and send it back to Earth pretty freaking cool and then uh you have um jupiter here with his ring um, or no saturn i'm sorry i always get jupiter and saturn mixed up i don't know why um big old gas giant with a big old icy ring going around it and i believe these little bright spots here um these guys right here are the uh, some of the moons that are in orbit around it pretty freaking cool um, and so, um, the last, I believe this is one of the last images it sent back. Um, this is actually a picture of, uh, Uranus, um, as it was passing by, I think this is just, you know, the, the sun reflecting off of the surface of it, um, which is a very blue, blue planet. And it's just kept on going. Um, I, have a picture of the next planet which is going to be neptune uh that's this guy right here i do not believe this picture actually no this was taken by voyager as well so it passed by uranus went to neptune um the big blue i think they call it like the sapphire in the in the galaxy or in our um solar system because it's so blue really cool <laughs> picture uh, especially given that, uh, you know, we took this picture using 1970s technology. I mean, that's pretty freaking cool to me. Um, and then it just on, kept on going. It wasn't able to, I don't believe it was able to get any like useful, uh, I mean, not to, it wasn't like, um, 
pretty to us anyway in terms of a picture of uh, Pluto. Um, but yeah, um, it was a, uh, um, it just, it's just kept on going. Um, I have some notes I wrote down for it. Let me pull them up real quick here. So, um, we knew that this was going to continue going forever and ever until it hit something, which is going to be many, many, many years from now. Um, but we installed what was known as a golden record on it. And I have a picture of that as well. Let's see. Yeah, right here. So, uh, JPL, which is the jet propulsion laboratory. Uh, this is the actual Voyager one here. They installed this record, this golden record, they call it, um, cause it was made of, I think it was made like plated in gold. Um, but they had, um, put a little picture on it of earth in relation to like other, you know, uh, interstellar objects around us to like, Hey, aliens, if you find this thing, this is where our planet was or is, uh, where our solar system is. We included things like, um, pictures of life on earth on it. We put greetings in multiple languages. If like we try to explain, like if you put a needle on it and you spin it, it'll like play sounds. Um, and then, um, we put music on it, which I thought was pretty cool. About 90 minutes worth of music ranging anywhere from Mozart to Chuck Berry on there. So really cool. Um, it is at this moment about 15 billion miles away and it is going at about 38,000 miles per hour, um, relative to the sun. So it's going that fast away from the sun right now. Now, um, we have since of course sent more missions out into the edge of the, um, solar system. Voyager one is still the furthest away because it has had the longest amount of time to keep going. Um, but we have since, um, sent more modern technology. Um, specifically the one I really like is the horizon one. Uh, that's the one that's took some really, really, really cool pictures of, um, let me see if I can find it. Oh, this is what the Voyager one looks like, um, when it was fully built and everything. And this is what it would look like hurtling through space at 38,000 miles an hour. Um, but yeah, um, this picture, this is like iconic. So horizon one, um, it had, taken this picture and we had uh, sent it on January 19th, 2006, specifically to take this picture of Pluto. Um, it got there about nine years later in uh, 2015 and it took this picture of Pluto. I mean, it is such a freaking cool picture. Um, and it really shows the detail of Pluto which is considered a dwarf planet now. It's not considered a full blown planet whatever people like to make definitions for things. It doesn't really matter, but, um, it's still a planet in my heart. So I've always loved Pluto just for being the thing furthest away from the sun. Um, however, it is considered to be a, an object in what is known as the Kuiper belt. Um, that's spelled K U I P E R. And basically it's like an asteroid field or an asteroid disc or ring or whatever you want to call it that is surrounding the entire, um, solar system. And essentially, um, from what I understand and what I've read and seen of that scientists that, you know, just discuss about the, the making of our, um, solar system is that. The solar system was made up of when it's very, very early time when the sun was first starting to get formed was made up of a lot of gas, like lots and lots of gas and all of these little rocky, um, basically asteroid sized things. And as the sun, um, combined together and got more massive and became more of a, an, a gravitational influence on everything around it what ends up happening is that it starts pulling things tighter in to the sun. And as it does that, um, all these objects start colliding with each other and melding together and melding together. And the, uh, that process is known as coalescing. Um, and that's what ends up creating all of our planets. Um, and, um, 
for whatever miraculous reason, you know, we have Jupiter and um, we have Saturn, two giant, giant planets that are between us and basically the outside uh, universe. Um, and there are constantly hurtling asteroids just all over the place. And because those massive planets are such, they, they draw everything into them. Um, they tend to suck in all of those asteroids and eat them up for us so that they don't. So that way that we have as it, it basically was like our little protect our, our little, our big protectors, like big brothers are like, Hey, we'll, we'll take on all these asteroids that don't do much to us so that they don't slam into earth and everyone else down there and destroy your planet and all life as we know it. Um, Obviously, they failed when it came to the dinosaurs, but, you know, different different subject for a different video. Um, but um, a lot of those objects are still collected out in the Kuiper Belt, um, where the influence of the sun is much less, so things out there coalesce much, much slower, which explains why Pluto is so much smaller. Uh, we have some other objects out there that we've taken uh, pictures of. I believe this is... Did I? Oh, I forgot to get a picture of that. Darn. Um, but, um, oh, wait, this is not Pluto. I messed up. Where is my picture of Pluto? I believe this is actually not Pluto, but Charon. Um, gosh darn it. Okay, hold on one sec. Let me see if I can get a quick photo of Pluto up here. I'm on NASA's website here for those wondering. Um, gallery. Um, yeah, here we go. Let's open that. There we go. There's a picture of, uh, that we took of Pluto. Um, pretty freaking cool. I, I accidentally did this picture, which is, uh, Charon. Um, and yeah, um, this one is the picture of Pluto. My apologies. Um, again, awesome, cool, freaking planet um really neat that we're able to get such a high quality picture of something so far away um but yeah so charon is another object in the kuiper belt but they're all relatively small compared to the planets and um it's because it, they're not in as much influence of the sun so they don't coalesce nearly as quickly as uh stuff down here um does so yeah that's about as far as human beings have been able to travel to and by human beings i mean the objects that we've made um, actual human beings uh, the furthest we've ever gone is the moon um, we haven't really left the influence of earth yet um, we haven't developed uh, good enough life support systems that can support life long enough to travel to say mars and back um, like when we were going to the moon we were sending people just to go orbit the moon and come back just to make sure that, you know, we can survive such a trip. Um, and we had some obvious disasters. I mean, uh, Apollo 13 being one of the big ones that people talk about. Um, and obviously lots of movies have been made about that one as well. And um, all of those missions ended up culminating to us putting people on the moon, which is about as far as we've gone. Um, there's just a lot of health concerns and other logistical issues with sending people that far away to go to our next nearest, um, well, the nearest planet is Venus. Venus is very inhospitable, which I do have a picture of Venus here. That's this guy right here. A uh, girl, I should say, because, you know, uh, Venus has always been associated with the, uh, uh, the female gender. But, um, yeah, um, it is it is closer to the sun and thus being really, really hot. Um, and I don't think we have the technology to be able to send people there and not have them uh, fry to a crisp, even though um, I'm sure it feels like uh, Vegas on most of that surface of that planet. So uh, pretty cool. Um, other planets that we've sent satellites to or uh, sent, you know, missions to would be Mercury, again, even closer to the sun. So uh, most of those missions end up with that satellite just getting burned up because they can't survive the heat for longer and long enough to be able to uh, do much more than just send back a few photos and be like, OK, I'm fried to a crisp now and uh, I'm going offline. 
So um, pretty cool. But Mars would be our most logical next place. And it's also very inhospitable. Um, and it's going to test the limits of how we can keep people alive um, in long missions like that. So, um, yeah, pretty cool stuff. Uh, I love the I love the question. Um, uh, my my wife, my love bug, she is incredible. She has such an imaginative mind, and I love um, um, answering questions. I know she like I can see her smiling. Um, listening to me talk about the stuff i've never had somebody who uh, appreciates my uh, curiosity as much and uh, i'm very blessed that she is the way that she is and she loves me for uh this nerdy stuff that i like to do because i know there's a lot of people that i've you know i'll nerd out with and then they'll be like i can see their eyes kind of glazing over from just not wanting to hear me nerd out about it because they're not as interested in it as i am um, so really blessed for that. Um, I appreciate the question and, uh, yeah, um, keep sending them my way. Um, I've got a whole, I've got a whole list on my Microsoft word right now of all the questions and I'm going to do my research and try and do something similar like this where I pull up, uh, pictures of it and, uh, to better illustrate it. But, uh, that's, that's pretty much it. I've got to start getting ready to head into work here. Uh, let's go full screen here. I got the pepper yes hi sweetie it is like 5 30 in the morning right now um so she's you know she likes to take her nap um although she likes to take naps at 5 30 in the afternoon too but she seems to be especially tired in the morning isn't that right yeah oh yeah she's annoyed with me she wants to just me to leave her alone and let her take her nap um but that's pretty much it, y'all. Um, again, I appreciate anyone and all of you who have uh, tuned in to listen to these uh, videos. Um, I really hope you enjoy my content. Uh, if you want to help out my channel, um, the biggest thing you can do to help me with that darn Google algorithm is uh, subscribing helps, obviously. Um, and... Um, hitting uh, either the like button, the thumbs up, or the thumbs down button, and leaving comments. All of that stuff seems to help out videos a lot, um, any kind of interaction with them. And um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video, and uh, I will see you guys on the next one. Bye!